Hello everybody, Walter Tugawa here. As you already saw at the title and the terminal, we today are going to a reenactment event again, the liberation of Antwerp. It's now currently two o'clock in the morning. I'm preparing myself to go to the owner of our M3A1 half track and together we will be riding into the heart of Antwerp. Over there we will set up an original World War II camp. There will be some very cool vehicles. We will do a tour through the city and also I heard there might be a Tiger II over there. So I hope you will enjoy the video. Keep watching and let's enjoy. Let's go. So we're now at tour with all the vehicles as I, I'm going to show you right away after this. We are here with the Chaffee, the Wheelies, Dodges, half tracks. Well, one very cool half track, of course. It's our half track, as you see in the background. I'm, uh, I don't really have a place to sit in. I'm just <laughs> kind of wandering around, sometimes sitting on the hood or hanging on the side. But it's going to be a very cool event, the liberation of Antwerp. The reason I find it so cool is because it's in a city, a big city itself and it gives a little bit of another other advocacy but the vehicles are leaving so let's, let's head back to the half track <laughs> So, the day has processed a little further. We didn't have a lot of time to film because there are an enormous amount of people here. I'm sitting in the half track with two of my best friends. So, <laughs> so no, but it's have been a very fun event. We had a blast driving the half track through the city of Antwerp, which was a unique experience because, yeah, you can't drive these vehicles because of like the bullshit with the climate and everything, but still. So, but as I said, I'm here with Matandro and with his one girl. So it has been a very fun time here. I'm hoping to film some more things. We're going to go on a little walk and sometime I'm going to try to film a little bit of the camp. So yeah, let's go to that. So as you already see in the distance, I can know I don't know if I can zoom. Oh I can. You already see some military vehicles, but though you can't see it on camera, there is a barrel there. I reckon out recognize out of thousands. It is oh shit. Okay, fixed. That is the tank 
one of the last produced tanks by the German army in an attempt to save the Third Reich. Although I'm not going to say the complete name, you can probably almost guess it. We will go to there, try to film it a little bit, and let's see what happens. Let's go. So what are we seeing here? I'm seeing an M7 Priest. I'm seeing, oh, I don't know how it's called. It's like that M5, M5B for the, uh, vehicle. 90 millimeter air defense cannon, a high speed tractor, half track, a wheelies Jeep. Of course, the mighty Sherman. I think that's another Sherman, I'm not sure. But still, as you see, already a lot of cool vehicles. I think that's a German Opel Blitz, I'm not sure. From afar, I couldn't see that well, but let's go look closer. So as you see, we have German vehicles here, which I didn't know. We have, of course, the famous SDKF set 251 German half-track. Right beside it, we have a vehicle. I like know which kind it is, but I think it's called an SDKF set 8. Also, I'm sorry if it's like a swore, uh, black thing here, but it just constantly pops up and I don't know why. Why? So, but this I think is a SDKF set 8. Around here we have, of course, the famous Kubewagen. And a question for you guys in the comments: Who do you think is better, the Kubewagen or the Wheelie Jeep? Let me know because I'm actually in the two, but I am making a video about this discussion, so it would be kind of cool to have some of your opinions about it. Right here we have, of course, the Captain Karat. Then something, as you see, looks very familiar. It's a Schwimmwagen. Right well, beside it, you have the famous R47, the German motorcycle. And right here, you have a German command car, a very cool car, in my opinion. One of the most beautiful in their arsenal. Right here you have, of course, the mighty Oberblitz, so the workhorse of the German army, used in many variations. As you see here, a mobile, a mobile hospital. You had workshops, personal transportation, weapons transportation, just everything. The German mighty tank I was talking about. It is the one. On the Tiger II. Some of you might recognize him. It's one of the most famous Tiger IIs in this world because it's one from Samur and it's, in my knowledge, one of the only ones still able to drive. As you see, you have the port with the MG13, not the MG34 or 42. The 13 was special made for this, well, not for this tank, but just tanks in general. Above, you have, of course, the mighty 80 mm cannon and the sloped armor just makes this thing so powerful. As you also see, it has been applied with some kind of lime you can compare it to because it makes it anti-magnetic. So if you stick a grenade on it, it won't stick. It just falls off. So if you go further, you have one big lamp. I don't know why, but around here, you have the other side of the German tank, a piece of track over there because yeah, it's German, it will break down after one kilometer. But still, it's one of the coolest vehicles, well not of the best, one of actually the worst vehicles the Germans made, but still, this beast weighs around 70 tons when it's empty. So just the, imagine this thing roaring and driving to you as an American soldier, it must have been terrifying. Also, it just cuts through everything the Americans had. Also. For comparison, this is the German Tiger II, and that's a Leopard 1. As you see, the height and the difference, just in general of bigness, it's, it's crazy. Over there you have some American soldiers talking. And here, the 300. With these big exhaust pipes, it's completely climate friendly. And here again, it's just such a beautiful, although it wasn't like a good tank and it didn't have any value in the German war effort, it's just such a cool tank. But around here, a Leopard, and I'm not sure if it's the one or two, I'm not a specialist on Cold War, but still, it's a Leopard, that's what I know. I think it's the two or the one, I'm not sure. It's a Belgian one, I see now, back when we had tanks. 
But yeah, it's a, it's a very cool viewing port. As you see, it has like multiple viewing ports. So here you have like three viewing ports. But if you compare with that with the mighty King Tiger, which was the nickname for the Tiger II, it's just completely something different. You have this one port around here and this other port which is kind of placed diagonally if you look right in front of it. So yeah, it's one of the strongest tanks in place of armor. But for the rest, it wasn't a very good tank because you don't have anything with the tank if it doesn't ride. It was more like a fortress. You rode it to a place and you stopped there. But still, they also have, of course, the German half track. I know I have already showed it, but still, one of the most beautiful vehicles of the German arsenal. There has been some kind of bullet hole uh, that must have been pleasant for the drivers, but it's a very cool vehicle. There were some other vehicles here, but they are mostly American and they are very ordinary vehicles to say it at that way. And they are all pretty covered. So tomorrow I'm going to come back and show you the tanks that are covered at the moment. So as you see, we're back in the collection room. Um, I told you that I was going to film the other vehicles and all that stuff. I didn't have the time anymore. After that I went back to the camp, we went to a kind of big dance for the liberation and the day after it was just crazy so in the morning there were like two big marine boats there one of the british army one of the belgium army we visited one of those and after that the people just keep coming and it was there were just so many people i couldn't just like go walking around there with my phone so i just kept myself busy with explaining to the people the thing that we enacted is still for learning and educating the people about the Second World War. So we're back in the collection room. I think now I already posted a video about the liberation of Wigne. So now it's Antwerp. There is one event coming up in the future. That's in Essen on the 20th of October. I'm going to make a video about that. For the rest, there will be some other videos coming like restoration videos. There is a very exciting video coming again, uh, more a documentary about the use of drugs during the Second World War. That and much more in the future. So if you're interested in this kind of one, that be sure to subscribe and like and see you the other time. So as now and as always, Walter Tega 1 out.